in the red corner. Blake Goodenbauer in the blue corner. Your referee for tonight's action is the boss, Bruce Allen, Jeremy J.D. Dorsey, here on commentary along with the henchman, Jordan Henry, and Zach and Wright. Let's watch some fights, folks. Okay, we had a sh we had a short break uh, for the introduction with uh, Jason, but uh, what we was talking about, you asked about, you know, does the number one ranking deter you or, or put, you know, some fear or whatnot. And in wrestling, one of the biggest downfalls for, for guys and parents is they tell their kids or, uh, or competitors themselves they watch the rankings. That, I mean, uh, the big mindset is it does not matter. You train, you're there to do what you need to do. And so uh, going outside your own box to look at things like that can be uh, a, a big hurt to your confidence and, and just your whole game. Ooh, oh, boy, I felt that. that. <laughs> the whole table just moved about three inches, it felt like. <laughs> Get your back. Yeah, it looks like Goodenhauer is uh, definitely not afraid taking it to him right now. Pull his head down. Swing, pull his head down. Hits, Marco. Hits. See Good. Short knee. Yeah. 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 Short knee. Big knee to the body. Left knee. Left knee. Got to be careful not to, hit, to yeah. land that knee to the head as an amateur. These are some big guys. He yeah. looks like he's about to push him through the fence. Yeah, and they're in shape too. They're yes, not. They are. They're not typical uh, heavyweights that you see at some other places that are just uh, you know out of shape and got no gas tank. These guys are really going after it. Marco's got some nice toe marks on the on the inside of his uh, left leg there already. Yes. Nice outside trip. Ooh, very right nice. Right control if he now, passes. Yeah, coming from Tarpon, right this is kind of their round. bread and butter. That was a great transition. The best time, we say it in wrestling all the time, the best time to score is after you score. He landed a takedown and passing right into a full mount. And great he, shots being landed from the top here. Oh, and he's Good throwing shot. everything on him. And this is the Tarpons bread and butter these days. You know, growing up in the Quad Cities, Tarpons was always a karate school. Well, now it's becoming quite the jujitsu school, and, and he's showing it right here. He needs to shove the elbow across his face if he wants to get his head on the opposite side. Good job attacking for a submission, though, and not burning out on the strikes from the top. Absolutely. Oh, and just, oh, and that's just creeping and securing this position is really good, too. And he's landing some good punches oh, here. Oh, man. man. Marco's not page. doing much here. That's that George Mastaval three-piece in a soda. Short time. Let's see if he tries to pull off a submission or just keep slamming punches until the round ends. Yeah, and he's trying to get that knee high and trap that. That right Ooh. arm of Marco. That's a couple good punches landing oh, right there. His one, head's another bouncing. One, another one, man. And he's saved by the bell. Oh, wow. Man. That is two fights in a row at the end of the first round. Yep. And uh, Marco's eye is rosed up, and it's starting to swell. Great first round Absolutely. by the Tarpons guy, Goodenbauer. Yeah. Man, a little late coming in there with Zinch. Yeah, a little late corner, corner man work here. So yeah, I guess that number one ranking uh, might not mean too much in Goodenbauer's mind. Well, sometimes yeah, it fires guys up. Yeah. Like they, that's the to be the best, you have to beat the best. And he's taking it as a challenge. Yes, I love he's it. He's saying, "Screw your number one." Yeah, I'm, I'm number, taking it. I'm number one. I'm number one. Yeah, <laughs> f you, buddy. Again, great first round by Goodenbauer. I know hearing uh the preview of this fight or in all the other fights that we have tonight from uh, the, uh, the podcast with Jason Vargas uh, had Mike Goodwin on last week and he was expecting this heavyweight bout to be probably over really quickly and um, we're already going to the first round first round is over with heading to the second one so and we saw a nice little ground game yeah um, nice so, yeah. beautiful outside trip into two transitions one after another secured that mount position and let some leather fly so here we are with the second One, round two, here at Cage yeah, Aggression 24 in this matchup between Marco Vukicic and Blake Goodenbauer. It's just Marco. Yes. It's just Marco. Okay. Yes. Oh, Marco. You call him Marco V. Ooh! Oh, 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 ducked right into that one. Wow. 
and Ouch. That's, and that's what. And he's recovered. I mean, he's in on that single. He needs to keep his legs moving. He needs moving. to bury his head still there. Yeah, move to the outside single and do something. And I was just about to say something about his awkward stance while he was standing, keeping his hands down by his waist and throwing kicks with his hands down. I'm sitting right next to Marco's corner, and they were telling him the whole time that Goodenbauer's hands were down, and he uh, ducked right in and ate a nasty shin to the forehead. He sure did. Seems to be have recovered somewhat well. I don't know if he's tired after that first round onslaught, but uh, he's, he's in a bit of a crucifix Yeah, here. he's, he's taking some damage of his own. What a great turn of events here. Got ourselves a fight on our hands here, boys. Go behind him. Cut that corner, Marco. Go behind him. Yeah, sprawl. Goodenbauer still fishing for that single. Keep coming, Marco. He's going to have to really drive to get into that. Into a double. Yeah, he's got to come up with it, though. He's got to get those hips in. But it's good that now he's got his head on the inside. You know, it's going to save him from a little bit of damage. And, and now he's circling. To his feet. And, he, and he does a great job. If he's got to keep oh. moving. He's got, Ooh, he's he got to right work there. for that single again. He's getting around him. On top. On top. I need your left hand. Hit him with that left hand. Hit him with that left hand. Yes. Hit him. Stay behind him. Underneath. Hit him underneath. Marco still might be a little bit hurt because he's still in a bit of a turtle situation here. That's a lot of weight he's carrying on top yes, of him. Yes, it is. He could get some. He could land some. Marco could land some good knees here to the body. The body. Yeah, he's not. Uh, or even just to his thighs, because he's not doing a whole bunch to move around. I like it. It's Marco's corner called to look for those ears and look for those eyes. Hitting the ears will knock the equilibrium off. Hitting the eyes will shut them. You can't see what's coming. Oh, yeah, and getting hit in your ears, boy, that catches your ears on fire. It feels like your head's on fire. And he's got to take some back now. Good power. Time, time, time. He's hitting him in the back of the head. They look like the first strike was a, a straight hammer fist to the About back of the three. head. Oh, yeah, two or three straight to the back. I've noticed those a few times throughout this round, too. And I mean, I can imagine it's super easy to do that anyway. Yeah, and he may have been targeting the ears. Uh, when a guy's on bottom and he's moving around, sometimes the strikes do land in the back of the head. And I don't know the intentions on the strikes, but I doubt they were uh, purposely meant to be hit in the back of the head. You know, if you even get a piece of the ear, it's a legal shot. But yes. He wasn't getting any of the ears. No. Like I said, the first one was a, it was a straight hammer fist to the back of the skull. Oh. Goodenbauer still looks a little out of it. Yeah, he's he's a different fighter right now. Outside trip body again. Lock here. If he would have hit that outside of trip again, he would have had another takedown. And there's the bell for the end of the second round. So we have to agree that the, the round split one and one. Yep. Yes. Now, based off the judging from the first round, I don't know if they gave uh, if they gave Marco V a 10-8 round on that one because there was some crucial ground and pound yeah, going on. Yeah, that was a pretty one-sided round. Yeah, that was a one-sided beating for sure. But in the same respect, the first round was pretty one-sided as well. Maybe not quite as one-sided. Uh, I don't know. He did take that full mount and land some pretty crucial ground and pound yeah. from the top. So. Uh, be interesting to see how the scorecards look right now, but we can't agree that the rounds should probably be split one and one. Oh, yeah. Big third round for both guys. So, yeah, fellas, we got two fights in a row where we've gone into the third round with one round apiece, pretty much, or at least what we what, see is <laughs> being one round apiece. But uh, you never know what the judges think. But um, if we learned a little bit from hearing that last score, you definitely gotta take it into your own hands. Yeah, man. we at least got one judge that's uh, trying to implement uh, the, newer, yeah, the newer scoring system based off uh, damage and things like that. Usually if it's a one-sided match, you gotta give them something better than 10, a 10 and nine score. A 10 and nine score is usually a close round. But Going into the third round here, you gotta expect Ooh. Marco V to be looking for that head kick. Yeah, Goodenbauer is coming in and dipping that head again as well, so. Might be setting up for that head kick one more time. Oh, Armin oh, here. No, not again. 
Jump and guard is never a good idea, even if you have a guillotine, especially Not, just to arm in. And especially when you're up against the cage like that. You get no leverage here. He's and already he's out. out. And now, and now, look, he just gave him that. He literally gave him that position. And this is where Gutenbauer wants to keep this fight for sure, so he's got to stay busy. Bruce will stand these amateurs up. He's very I, good at that. I would like to see good. Oh, he's controlling the arm. Might be finding a triangle here. I was going to say I'd like to see Gutenbauer turn Marco's head into the cage, into the corner, and that's when you get your most effective strikes and shots oh, in from yeah. the top. It's real hard. Oh, nice him. pass there. Just Ooh, he's got an arm triangle po possibility here too. But he's getting blocked by the cage here. Now he's completely passed. He's got his knee up close to the inside of his hip here. He's advancing well, and that's what's going to keep him in this top position the entire time. Come on, man. Hey, come on, man. Where's the position? He's walking a small circle, Marco. Put your feet in Marco's that corner face. upset. Marco, there were some fingers in the cage by face. Goodenbauer. But Bruce circle. did a good job of, of catching it and then knocked his hands out of that. He's walking a circle. We have a full mount by Goodenbauer. Yeah. And it looked like he was going to target an arm there for a second, but. Well, ho hopefully, if he's smart, he just go ahead and tries to keep this position, yes. land shots, and look to win the fight. Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to get into. To, to fall for an arm here it would be probably one of the worst ideas. About as silly, because if he doesn't get it, about as silly as, the, as going for a guillotine. He's going for the sweep, and he stays on top. Good job by Gunbar. Good hips. Good hips, yeah. Way to see that coming. Under one in the left in this matchup. Shots to the body. Sounded like Rocky when he was smacking that Big stab shot. of beef in the freezer. And this is where you see a little less damage coming from a great position like this because Pro's man, I'd like to think he would just be mashing elbows. And another oh, arm, and triangle. arm triangle here. And he that one looks own. good. He didn't get that leg. He's through. pulling it in for him. That's a bad move. Oh, and here oh, it is. Wow. He got it with a half guard. That's kind of hard to finish from that position. Well, Marco is doing the wrong thing. He was pulling his arm down for him. When he should have been pushing it back up or trying to hip into him. Yeah, he was trying to create space so he could breathe a little bit, and unfortunately, he did the wrong thing. Yeah. But an impressive performance by both guys. These oh, guys were out here ready to win the fight at any you know, any moment, and it definitely showed. Like I said before, you, you, you look at the card, you see heavyweight, you don't expect a three-round battle that ends in a submission, and that's exactly what we got this go-around. No. I'm glad we got it. Yeah, yeah glad true, we got true. it. That was a great true. fight. Yes, that was, uh, that was good for me as a fan of mixed martial arts, for sure. As a commentator, it was great to call. Looks like we have Jason Vargas coming in to give us the official decision here at Cage Aggression 24. Ladies and gentlemen, your referee, Bruce Allen, has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 41 seconds into round three, declaring your winner by submission due to triangle choke, Blake Gutenbauer. Yeah.